Hi, I'm Steve Good. Welcome to my scroll saw workshop. Well, we've got a beautiful, cool night here in Kentucky uh, tonight, so I thought I'd come out in the shop and put together a video of uh, what I hope uh, will be a fun project for you. Not too hard to put together, and uh, it's also not useful at all, but it's a lot of fun to make. So I want to show you the project here and uh, give you a few tips on what we're going to work on. A few months ago, I put together a project uh, out of just some construction grade uh, 2 by 4 and uh, everybody seemed to really like it. It's an inexpensive material and you can come up with it real easy. So I thought uh, this project would lend itself pretty well to that. Now you will also need uh, maybe some other wood too, depending on how you want to make this project. But what we're going to build tonight, and you may have seen this on the web, and I can't take credit for this being my ideal, but I did design this pattern. And uh, it took me a little while to figure out exactly how to do it, but uh, I've got it put together. And what it is is a chainsaw. And the chain is solid links, not being glued back together. And cut uh, about 90%, 95% on the scroll saw. You'll have to do just a little bit of extra sanding and a little bit of extra cutting with an X-Acto knife to finish it off. But it's pretty easy, and I'll show you the techniques. And uh, what you're going to need to do to build this, and if you just want to make the chain, that's fine. You'll notice I've got a real short chain on this one. The pattern will actually have uh, three more links on it, so the chain will be a lot longer, and this project will look a little better. But this was just my practice piece. And uh, what I'm going to do tonight is I'm just going to cut two of the links in the demonstration just to show you the, the technique. And uh, then when you download the pattern, you can cut the full seven links. And then you can either add the handle to it or not, depending on what you want to do. So what you're going to do is you're going to get your 2 by 4 and you're going to rip it down and you'll probably need about 9 inches to make the full saw. But in this case I'm only going to cut 2 lengths. So what you're going to do is cut off a piece of the 2 by 4 that's about the length of the pattern that you're getting ready to cut. And you may want to, I, I'm going to include the practice lengths in the pattern also. Uh, so you may want to try that first just to make sure you got the technique down before you uh, go ahead into the full saw. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take that 2 by 4 and you're going to rip one edge of it off. We'll say about 3 quarters of an inch. Then set your table saw to one and a half inches and rip the other half off so we've got a nice square one and a half inch by one and a half inch blank that in your case will be about 8 inches long. This one's only about 5. And uh, this is the piece we're going to use to make the saw one. So get all that ready and I'll move on and show you how to apply the pad. Okay, I've got everything that we need here uh, set out on my little cutting board. And to give you an idea of how we're going to do this, think of this, if I put these links just like this, that's how they're positioned inside this piece of board we're going to cut them out of. So obviously to go from that solid board to this, we're going to have to cut uh, a, a compound cut. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our blank that we've made, and we're going to take our pattern, and right on the center line, and you'll see that I've cut the pattern out exactly on the lines, right on the center line, we're going to put that on the edge of the blank, and we're going to fold it over, just like that. Now what we'll do is we'll glue this to the blank, and then uh, I'll get back with you and show you the next step. Now what I've done so far is I've cut out the pattern, and I've applied it to our one and a half inch by one and a half inch square blank, and I've wrapped the pattern around two sides of the blank with uh, and affixed it to the blank with spray adhesive and I did go ahead and apply some box tape over the pattern uh, that just makes it a little easier to cut and less likely to burn the wood. Now again what we're going to try to accomplish here is we're just going to make these first two lengths in the demonstration. So if you can see this, this link is on the top and this link is on the top here and then we'll also cut the side pattern which will be just the opposite which will be positioned like this. And uh, I'll meet you over at the drill press. We'll drill our entry holes and then we'll be able to, ready to get started on the sawing. Over here at the drill press, I'm going to do our entry holes. And uh, nothing challenging here. I'm going to drill one entry hole for the interior of this link. I'm going to drill an entry hole on the outside into the waste area. I'm going to flip the blank over. I'm going to drill another entry hole in the interior of that link and another entry hole out in the waste. There's our entry holes cut and we're ready to uh, head over to the scroll saw. I've got everything I need over here at the scroll saw now to begin this cut. 
And uh, here's what I've got. I've got the blank with the pattern applied. I've got the two cutoffs from the original blank that we cut off at the table saw. And I'm going to use these to help hold the pattern while I cut. So don't throw these away. We're going to save them and use them. I have two of these quick disconnect clamps. I'm going to use these to clamp these three blocks of wood together. So go ahead and uh, get everything squared up, everything flat on the table, and then tighten the clamps down. And you'll find if you alternate the clamp direction, it makes the uh, piece a little more stable, a little easier to hold on to. And it's not so important when we're cutting the first side to have this all clamped together, but when we flip the piece over and actually begin cutting the second side, then you need all this stuff to hold the pieces together while you cut. So it's just that simple. I've got a blade. This actually actually happens to be a uh, number five polar blade. It's a flying dustman blade. Uh, it's a, a fairly thick blade. So you, you probably want to do this project with at least a number seven or something that's designed to cut a little thicker stock. And uh, you don't have any real intricate turns or intricate cuts in this. So a thicker blade will work fine for you. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut the interior of this first link first, then I'll come out and cut around, then we'll flip the piece over and do the two cuts on the other side. So as you can see, I'm only doing two links, but there's not really a lot of cuts here. Even if you were cutting the full seven lengths of the saw, it's not that bad. So go ahead and uh, get your blade installed. Put some pretty good tension on it, and I want this piece sitting down as flat as I can on the table, so I'm pushing on it pretty good. And all I'm going to do at this point is cut out the interior of this length. So we'll begin the cut, and uh, then we'll come back when we're done. Moved ahead a little bit, went ahead and finished this first interior cut. And this is all waste, so it is okay to take this uh, piece out and remove it. You can toss that. Now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and start the exterior cut. We'll cut all the way around that, and I won't bore you with that part. I'm just going to cut around the exterior of the pattern. So, pretty simple cut, and then we'll come back when we get ready to flip it over. 